Hi, I'm Chris and today on Crazy Fabrications, I'm going to be releasing my Raspberry Pi camera mount that I designed for the Ender 5, but that actually can work on any printer that actually uses these 20 millimeter based extrusions, such as 2020 extrusions or 2040 extrusions. So if you've been looking for a nice rigid Raspberry Pi camera mount that will use a camera that actually gives you focus so that you can get the uh, good time lapses you've been looking for, stay tuned right here and I'll show you where you can get this and how you can put it together right here on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. So here I am on my highly modified ANET A8. This one doesn't catch fire anymore. And I've got all of the components laid out, plus two of this one, because I actually used two of these uh, for this particular uh, printer that I'm going to put these on. These are all the various components that you need to build the camera mount. Uh, I've got the uh, mounting base plate that actually attaches to the extrusion. I've got these actually hold the camera in place. This is a pivot for the camera. And then I've got various size... Uh, mounting rods or rails or whatever you want to call them that actually will position the camera where you want it to be. The idea behind the design of this camera was that I wanted a mount that would be rigid. That's why I, there are a lot of other camera mounts that you can use on uh, Thingiverse, but this one was designed to be rigid with as few joints as possible. The printer is moving a lot and therefore you could run into a case to where a lot of joints would actually create a lot of vibration in the camera. I wanted to minimize that and I actually this is my second version of this and the original version actually made all pegs that you could use to assemble this and so it required no extra screws to put it together. The problem with this though is even with the peg system that, that you could kind of shore up it it wanted to sag because of the way that pegs have to be made uh, to where they can bend, you end up with sagging of the camera. So this latest version I've made actually uses screws to actually assemble it so that you know you can tighten it, you can make it as rigid as you like. So again, that's the design goals here. This final print I've done here uses carbon fiber PLA. I use that for two reasons. Number one, it's going to be more rigid than just standard PLA. Uh, adding the carbon fiber to it uh, takes some of the flex out of it. It's also going to be lighter than standard PLA because of the carbon fiber, uh, which also should reduce the amount of sagging that you have in the print. This camera mount, of course, can be printed in any filament. You can print it in PLA, you can print it in PETG. It really doesn't matter. Uh, as I've got it laid out here, this is going to be the orientation that you're going to find it in on Thingiverse so that it prints correctly. Uh, and there's only one component of the whole set, this one here that uh, actually is going to need supports. It's because these screw holes actually have inset uh, nuts and those parts are going to need uh, probably concentric supports, uh, but it's minimal. Everything else prints flat. Uh, I've set it up to where you won't have any problems printing this on any printer. So let's get this off the bed and let's get it put together. I print with brims because it makes sure that my components are going to be flat. Some of these brims are, of course, stuck together. It's not a big deal. I'm going to remove them all anyway. This is an ultra base sheet. does a really good job of sticking to components, but they actually come off really easily when you're done. There we go. Let's go to cleanup and assembly. One other word on the print settings of these. Uh, I like to use, particularly with any mechanical parts like this, I use a 1.6 millimeter wall, uh, and then I use a 50% infill to make these really rigid. Um, and I just think for a structural component like these that are actually gonna be holding something up, those are the best settings. Through the cleanup process here, I'm gonna use two tools. I'm gonna to use the utility knife to get off the larger pieces of plastic. And then I'm gonna go back over all the edges with the deburring tool to get off that last bit of plastic around the edge and to make it smooth. Uh, you can check out the deburring tool in the description if you don't already have one. So let's talk about the camera I chose real quick. So. The reason for this camera is there's a standard Arduino camera that doesn't have the lens on it. Uh, the lens is going to do two things for us. So the lens is going to, first of all, put glass between the actual uh, camera lens and your subject, which is going to produce a better image. It's also this one, with when you loosen the screw here, you can then focus this camera. 
which is going to give you a lot better picture. It allows you to get closer up on the object that you're actually trying to uh, observe and uh, not lose focus. So with this, your time lapses should turn out a lot better without actually having to buy a more expensive camera. This again, it's an Ar ArduCam. It can be found on Amazon. I'll give you the link in the description. Uh, it's about $30, which isn't too bad for what we're making. So I'm actually gonna put this on fast mode so that you guys don't get bored watching me put this together. First thing I'm doing is embedding the nuts here. Uh, you can either hammer them in, you can use a vise, you can use the method I'm using here, which is to tighten them in to the base with the screw, which basically pulls them in using the screw, then you pull the screw out. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is then put the nuts in the side walls, which are gonna be for the tilt mount. Then we can set the camera into the base. We need to remove the two screws from the actual camera lens itself otherwise we won't be able to fit this sleeve around it once the sleeves put in we can put in the four screws tighten that down then we can put back in the two screws that we pulled out it's the one thumb screw and then a Phillips screw that holds everything together next we're going to put an M5 nut into the base using one of those methods as before we're going to tighten that down now we're going to attach the tilt to the camera we're going to put a washer between the two it's a little difficult but it's worth it and we're going to use an M3 screw to screw that together on both sides. Now we're going to put together the base. Again, we're going to embed an M5 nut in the bottom. Then we're going to use an M5 by 20 socket head cap screw uh, to attach all these other pieces together. Again, embedding M5 nuts in each of the pieces. I'm also using two M5 washers, one in between them and one on top uh, to put everything together. That makes everything slide better. Uh, it, it makes it where you can actually adjust everything without too much trouble. Uh, it also protects the plastic from the screw itself. And finally, we attach the camera tilt assembly to the top and we're all done. And this is what the fully assembled piece looks like before we attach it back to the printer. So as the final step of the process, let's get this attached to the printer and hooked up to our Raspberry Pi. Got the usual M5 screws attach here and slide right in and I've got our T-nuts that will slot into the extrusions line those up and this goes straight over here you can put this obviously wherever you want to as long as the belts aren't in the way Make sure these are good and secure. You should be able to look from the side and see that they are in all the way. All right. And now, if you need to, you can loosen these up a little bit. They can be tightened down afterwards. Notice the one up here is in the bottom so that it can be adjusted. Okay. And you just put it where it needs to go, roughly. And this can all be adjusted. You can switch out the pieces. Last thing to do is attach it back to your Raspberry Pi. In this mount, I need to run it back through the top. And I put it back into the upper ribbon cable slot. Tighten that down. All right, I'm gonna slide this on for now. I'll put the screws back in later once I've verified that it works. So to make sure everything's lined up where you want it to be and make sure that you're getting the, the picture that you want, the picture quality you want, You'll need to open up your Raspberry Pi interface, your OctoPi interface, and make sure that number one, everything's in frame that you want in frame, and number two, that you use the focus on the camera. I usually center my carriage so that I have something to focus on, get like the, the, the heat warning and the Ender logo in focus, and then you can go for your first test print. I will link to an OctoPi OctoPrint tutorial as well as a time-lapse tutorial so that you can get more information about how to set up the software. Now let's go check out my first print using this mount. This model is by David Ospin. It can be found at My Mini Factory and it is printed in Poly Alchemy Onyx at a 0.12 layer height. So that about does it for this one. I think that takes you through all the steps that you'll need to be able to print one of these for yourself, to be able to assemble it. So head over to Thingiverse, download these files, if you need any of the parts that I mentioned here, if you need any of the screws, if you need the camera itself, I've got affiliate links to Amazon down in the description. If you buy through those links, you'll help me out, you'll help the channel out a little bit. 
If you want to help out the channel long term, please check out my Patreon page uh, that I've linked below. I've got some long term goals set up there. I also have some rewards for you for signing up at different tiers. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit one of the various subscribe buttons you'll find down below. Uh, hit the little bell if you'd like to be notified each time I post a video. That about does it for this week here on Curzy Fabrications. Thanks for joining me.